testing a model visually. So your whole project is really asking, is there a relationship between X and Y? That's from your model and that's a hypothesis. You're hypothesizing that changes in X cause changes in Y. And a scatter plot is one way to find out if there's a relationship. It's a really good first step. The main question for your project is, does something that matters a lot in life depend on money? Okay, so you have a model something like this. Health is a function of money and something else. And the demo that I'm about to do will show you how to prepare the data for a scatter plot, how to generate a scatter plot, and how to add a trend line. And that's what you'll be doing in lab this week. Um, you can skip ahead if you already know how to do that, but do look at the rest of the PowerPoint because there's some info in there about scatter plots. Okay, so we're going to go to that Excel file that we prepared. Um, you're going to have to put the Y variable to the right hand side of your X variable, the income measure. Um, that's just the way Excel likes it. I'm going to highlight both of those columns. I'm going to look for, um, hmm. I want to do a graph, so let's see. Okay, they call it a chart. All right. I'm going to do a scatter, a marked scatter. That's what you want, a marked scatter plot. Oh, there it is. Boy, that was pretty easy. Okay, let me just point out a few things. First thing is that the GDP per capita is over here. You want that. You want your x variable on the x axis. The other thing you want is life expectancy going up. All right. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. And all right, so you can see that there is an upward slope. Um, but it kind of goes up steeply and then flattens out. So uh, one of the things that you're going to do in your lab is draw a trend line. So let's see how we can do that. Um, let's see if it's in format. No. Let's see, chart layout. Ah, trend line right there. Okay, so um, add a trend line. Let's start with linear. Okay, well, it looks like it's up, but a lot of the dots are kind of far away. What you're going to do in lab is experiment with a few other. What about exponential? How does that work? Oh, wait, I have too many there. That looks weird. That doesn't look right either. Um, let me see if there's anything else that they have here. Uh, I thought there were more options. Oh yeah, okay, let's try logarithmic. Hmm, I like that. I don't know why these guys are still there. Let me see. Ooh, okay, let's see if I can get rid of those. Trend line. Uh, let's go back to no trend line. <laughs> really, I mean it. Okay. <laughs> All right, so let's try, I like those other ones. The logarithmic seem to really look good to me. Okay, all right, that looks better. That seems to capture more of what's going on. So you're going to do the same thing. You're going to create a scatter plot, and then you're going to look at what fits it best. Okay, so let's go back to the PowerPoint and see what else we're going to be doing. All right. All right, we already talked about that. All right, so how to prepare the data. You just have to get the y variable on the right-hand side of the x variable. I just found a function that said chart and scatter. That was pretty easy, and I added a trend line. Well, that's pretty easy. Uh, it's a little bit harder to interpret the scatter plot, but it's still pretty straightforward. The first thing you look at is slope. Is the relation positive or negative? Okay, so if I go back to my Excel file, I can see it's positive. As my income goes up, the, the, this line goes up. So that's the positive relationship. That's important. The next thing is functional form. Is it linear or nonlinear? Well, the one that seemed to fit best, my data was the nonlinear, the logarithmic form. Okay, actually, let's go back there. What does that mean? Well, if we look at it, what a logarithmic form means is that for low values of income, there's a big increase in life expectancy. But as I get to be, oh, here, or maybe even back here, at $20,000 GDP per capita, it kind of flattens out. So that's the interpretation, just a description of what it looks like. 
Okay. Um, let's see. Okay, we have those two. Economic significance. Is the effect of money big or small? Okay, now this is really interpretation. The slope, the functional form, those are really just like, you know, very factual. Economic significance is more of an interpretation. So let's go back and see how you would interpret it. Is this a big change? Well, let's look at it. If I go from 10 to 20,000, which is doubling my income, my life expectancy on average, that's what this trend line tells me, goes from 70 to, I'm just looking at 20,000, well, it goes to like 70 to 76. Okay, so this is pure interpretation. Do you want those extra six years? If you're like, hell yeah, then, well, then it's big. And if you're like, well, that doesn't really matter, then you would say it doesn't make that much of a difference. Um, however, I think that would be a difficult interpretation to have here because if we look here, um, the trend for a very low per capita income is the, these lowest countries have 50 and countries with the highest income have 80. That's a big difference, a 30-year difference. So it is interpretation, but your interpretation could be wrong. And by wrong, it would be like, well, most people wouldn't agree with you. So you want to be, you want to be reasonable when you make an interpretation. So let's go back here, make it nice and big, and bring that up. Economic significance. And you'll be discussing that in your group. Like, well, you know, is that big? Is that a big difference or not? All right, the last thing you look at in interpreting a scatter plot is the variation of precision. Is the relationship precise with points clustered around the trend line, or is there lots of variation? All right, so let's go back out to the graph and take a look at it. Well, I see some points that are kind of, you know, way out there. Um, so this is eyeballing. Most of the points are clustered near the line. Again, this is interpretation while you're just eyeballing it. Later on when we do a regression analysis, we'll have a number that you can point to that will really help you say whether it's precise or not. Um, but I can tell you this is pretty precise. There's only a handful of countries that are far away from the line. And what you're going to do in lab is look at them like, hmm, what country is this? And the way that you'll do that is that when you point on it, it tells you, okay, uh, the life expectancy is 46.3 and the GDP is 12,009. I can find that. I can find that by sorting. Let me go ahead and do that. So I'm going to sort on life expectancy because it's a really low life expectancy. Okay, so remember data, sort. Uh, I want to do it by life expectancy. I'll do it on the first one. And smallest to largest, yep, that's what I want. I want to find this country here with the 46.3. There it is, it's Botswana, okay? And so what I would want to do is like, oh, they have a pretty decent per capita income. What's going on there? Uh, it might be interesting to speculate on some of these countries that are far away. Another thing to look at is here's a country that has a really low income and a pretty high um, life expectancy, 72.5. Well, let me look down at the 72.5 and see if I can find that data point. Okay, so here it is with a really low income, a pretty decent life expectancy. That's Cape Verde. Might be interesting to speculate on why that is. That's what you'll be doing in lab this week. And that will go into your paper as well. Let's go back to the PowerPoint. I think we've, well, let me just, let me just review this. And I won't bother to make it big so you can see everything. Uh, when you interpret a scatter plot, you're looking for what is the relationship, positive or negative, what's the functional form, linear or nonlinear, what's the economic significance, is this a big deal or not such a big deal, and how precise is it? Okay. All right, there is a limitation to looking at a scatter plot, and that's that you're not holding anything else equal. The relationship might not be about money, but about something else that's correlated with money. And that's why you're going to have an x2 variable. A uh, scatter plot is a good way to get a feel for the data, a first step toward testing your model. And in the next couple of weeks, you'll be testing it more formally.